Spotify fans, it's Friday. Favorite part of being an author? I think I just said it was just hanging out with other authors, getting to meet other writers. That's my favorite part. Yeah. I like, um, you know, I like. I like being online and talking to uh, teenagers and stuff, and fans, and even you know the fans that aren't teenagers and stuff. I, I just really enjoy that. True, meeting readers. Is yes, really big. doing something like this is a lot of fun. It must be kind of weird because you yeah. know, like for us, it's really weird. I'm for me meeting Max. You know, yeah, like yeah. Seeing our videos and like. But I it's never the same yeah. in person, yeah. isn't yeah. it? I always like it when people tell me who they are online if they have like a different handle. They don't use their real name, and I know I end up signing a book to Jennifer, and it's really you know, frisky lucky. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, if you wanted to tell me that you were frisky, I would have known who you were. Yes, yes. And then, and then you find out they say thanks. I, it was a great meeting you last night, and you're like, oh, that was you. <laughs> we didn't see you. I don't know. So be sure to tell us. Who would win in a fight, Dumbledore or Magnus? Well, Magnus is in better physical shape because he pretty much remains about the same age for eternity, whereas Dumbledore gets older and older. So if it was a physical non-magic fight, then Magnus would beat up Dumbledore. <laughs> but that would be mean. <laughs> and if it was a magical fight, um, I think they're both pretty powerful, but Dumbledore is sneaky and cunning, and so he might get behind Magnus in some way and take him out. Jenny Lee Simner, author of Bones Affair, she was saying that thing that she's done in the name of research is go to Iceland. Uh, What's the, your most favorite thing that you've ever done in the name of research? Yeah. Yeah. No, like hardly anything. You research is dreams, you just sleep all the time. I know, <laughs> I, have to, I have to, to sleep. It's just boring. I'm boring. Not boring. Not boring. And stuff. You're not boring. Um, all right, me, the weirdest <laughs> thing I've done is uh, with Holly Black tried to break into a condemned building on Roosevelt Island in New York City and then we were chased away by the police. Yeah, well, that's cool. That, that was, was like good time. not thing in the name of research. Nope. <laughs> well, I wouldn't call it fun. It was fun until the police arrived and then Holly started running and now she was like, I gotta go. And I was like, oh, she's just disappearing into the distance. She <laughs> Did you use that for a book? Or for like yeah, a it's in book? the end of City of Bones. There's a whole scene that takes mm -hmm. place at the abandoned smallpox hospital. Oh, that's that place. Right. Oh, so I did cool. use it. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. That's what we're all about here at Five Awesome Bringing YA Bringing awesomeness. <laughs> Do you find yourself more or less inspired as time goes by? I mean, if you're working on a specific book, I think it comes in cyclical. Like, you're inspired, and then you kind of feel like you're losing that inspiration, and then you have to do some stuff to kind of bring your inspiration back. So it comes and goes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I agree with that 100%. How do you negotiate with editors? Because you were saying in the talk today that you haven't even shown your editor the book, and you even wrote an entire manuscript, and now you're just starting off new. How, do you, how does that process work? for you as an author. Gone was under contract and we talked about what the story was going to have in it before I started writing. And we talked through it and I wrote up like a two page um, synopsis of what my plans were and I don't have to follow that exactly. Um, but I actually did and uh, when we got to the end uh, I knew something was missing from the book and I knew that she would probably think there was something missing too, but I wasn't quite sure exactly what to do there. And I really have learned to count on my editor because she gets the books. She got Wake and she got Fade and, you know, I just really trust her instinct. So I thought after writing it all and, you know, you go over it so many times that you know it way too well yourself and so you need that, that third person. And, and when she read it, she came up with uh, just some really brilliant idea, which may, may, it still meant I had to rewrite the whole thing from, from scratch, but that was okay because I really wanted it to be good, and I think it, I think it will be. But yeah, we go back and forth on that, and she, send me, she sends me emails on what about this and what about that, and then I write it up and I have to turn it in again. So. Do they have the most input in your work? Other than yourself? Y yes, yeah, they do. So you have to really rely on them? A lot. Have you ever had like a disagreement with them about like what to do? Sure. You disagree with your editor sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, well, 
It depends on what it is and how big of a deal it is. Um, you basically talk to your editor and you say, I don't agree with you and this is why, and then you try to come to some kind of compromise. Your editor cannot force you to make changes that you do not want to make, but you should ideally trust their judgment and listen to them. And sometimes you just need to explain. You know, there was something my editor wanted me to cut out of City of Bones and I had to explain to her, look, this is important because I need to leave it in because it foreshadows something that happens later. And she was like, okay, fine, in that case, leave it in. But yeah. then sometimes she'll she'll want something and I'll we'll go back and forth and I'll realize she's right. You know, she's more often right than wrong, which is yeah. what you want your editor. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's a it's a partnership. It's not a it's not a conflict. How do you feel about like the Kindle and books <laughs> on the internet? <laughs> I'm happy that people are reading. I don't really care what format they read in, as long as they read. Uh, the only thing that concerns me about the Kindle and ebooks is that books are so easily pirated and then distributed for free on the internet. And I don't really know how the book industry is going to handle that, considering how badly the music industry handles pirated music. I feel like I worry that the, you know, there's going to be a clash between the publishing industry and the fans in some kind of, you know, unpleasant way. I mean, you don't want to do your readers out of being able to read your book, but you also mm -hmm. don't want to find yourself in a situation. What books would you recommend? I have two books here to recommend, and the first one is The Dust of 100 Dogs by A.S. King. And I'm just going to read the back flap because it's much more succinct than what I could uh, try and summarize. In the late 17th century, famed teenage pirate Emer Morrissey was on the cusp of escaping the pirate life with her one true love and unfathomable riches when she was slain and cursed with the dust of 100 dogs, dooming her to 100 lives as a dog before returning to a human body with her memories intact. Now, she's a contemporary American teenager, and all she needs is a shovel and a ride to Jamaica. It was an awesome book. I loved it. Uh, it's very beautifully written, and it's really different, and I like different stuff. My second book is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman, and uh, I haven't finished this one yet. I've, I'm about a third of the way in, and it's about a family that gets killed, and then a little baby escapes and goes and lives in the graveyard with ghosties and vampires and stuff. One vampire. One vampire. It's awesome. It's so awesome. Huh? It's, like a, it's like a remake of The Jungle, jungle Book. So... There we go. Well, thank you guys very much thank for having you. us Thanks. on uh, Five Awesome Way fans. We have enjoyed it. Yes. Thanks, guys. It was great yeah. to meet you. Great you to too. meet you. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs>